You don't want to be the person that's just placating everybody yeah. to be pleasant. I know. It's boring. So boring. You're not um, a Southern woman. You're not a Southern woman living on a cul-de-sac. Yet. No, I like your poofy sleeves on your dress. It's pretty. <laughs> you look great. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, hello. Welcome back to the Pop-Up with Paul and Friends. That's what I do. I get right into it. I'm glad you guys are here. Thanks for coming back again. However you got here, you came to listen to watch. We appreciate it. I appreciate comedians. I appreciate meeting new comics. As you guys know, every time I'm doing shows, I'm like meeting cool people and I immediately think like they should come in the garage and just, you know, trust me enough to sit in my garage and hang out. And this next comedian I just met randomly. I think it's very cool that you showed up. At the level you're at in comedy, you showed up here. Put your hands together for Catherine Blanford, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You did send a rider. You said a bunch of, because you're at that level. You yes. Did, yes. You know? I'm at that level. I show up to clubs and I say, guys, I have sold 12 tickets in Tulsa. Yeah. You, you better have my organic eggs and arugula right. salad right. ready for me. My egg salad and arugula. Yeah. You know, this business is deceiving, though, because you you do get treated well, depending on the gig. Like, I saw you yeah. I just watch your Tonight Show clip, how cool you did the Tonight Show last year. Thank you. Making your television debut, please welcome the very funny Catherine Blanford. When you funny. go do the Tonight Show, you, get, you got veggies in that green room. You got whatever you want. Oh, it's... Well, that's the best thing about Tonight Show. The green room is everything that the show's sponsored by. Yeah. And so they have... Have you been in there? No. Okay. It's like... It, it's like... Uh, what is the... um? Remember Candyland, the board? Of course. And you'd have like your chocolate section, your candy section, your, I don't know, sugary, sure. whatever. Everything. It was like Candyland in the green room. Like this section was cheese and crackers mm. brought to you by Whole Foods or Erwan. Yeah. And then this was your, this was your organic chocolate section that was brought to you by whoever else their sponsor is. And it was like little milk bar. It was a milk bar section. Everything. And, oh, I did. I and mean, they were like, take it all. Yeah. I mean, I wish... If I could write a pamphlet on a first time guest to the Tonight Show, I would say to bring two empty bags, bring two Ziplocs. giant yeah. duffel bags, duffel bags for and, the food. Yeah, think about the amount of free stuff that they get, though. It is true; it's all brand deals. You yeah. know, yeah, that, that's I nice. Mean, they have so much money. That must have been wild. I I wanted to start with that clip because I just watched it to get to know you better before I met you here. And when you come out, look, I've, I've talked to people who've been on that show back in the day, Carson. Like, I love yeah. I love Late Night. It's my favorite topic, one of my favorites. But when you walked out in that set, killer set, you do great. But you, you. you you are like how I would imagine it would feel when you walk out of that stage. You're like, holy shit, I'm here. Oh, yeah. I do. My story about that show is not like most comics. I lucked out more. Like, I was in Atlanta. I wasn't in New York. Mm -hmm. I... Uh, I've told this story a couple of times, but like essentially the biggest thing, the biggest lesson I learned from that is sometimes a no is the greatest blessing in your mm. life. I earlier that year I had some like clips pop off. I, um, then I heard I was on the short list for JFL, like nice. new faces, yeah. which is that's it for a budding comic that can be career changing. I was so excited. And then I started getting calls, like talking to some people about management. And I, I was like, I can't, I can't, Sign with anybody because I would be under new faces unwrapped and mm. I wanted to be available for that. Um, and then I got the call that I didn't make JFL. And so I immediately called the the guys I wanted to work with as managers. And um, they I just told them my, my kind of goals. And I was like, I'd love to be on late night by the sure. end of the year. It was one of those things where I was like, I'm going to throw it out there. Without any expectations. That's a big ass. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like, things... It, I mean, there was so many things where the stars just aligned. And my manager happened to be at The Tonight Show for another comic. And nice. found out that on this one episode, that they already had a band that dropped out because of COVID. And he's like, I just signed this girl. Whoa. And, I mean, they mess They called me on Thursday. I sent in a tape and transcript sat Saturday. He was like, here's the edits on Sunday. Retape it. Da 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 da. Retaped it. Monday, I'm at my nanny job in Atlanta. Wow. They called her like, here, this is flagged and this is flagged. Uh, the last bit I did on it, like about Saul Daddy, <laughs> the original bit is about, I kind of talk about playing like 
because we're like you were just really dumb 20 year old girls on Mm -hmm. a bachelorette trip and i talk about playing pretend kidnap and this whole thing the original thing is like you the worst part about playing kidnap is when your captor's like actually i got someone else so you're free (laughs) to go and the the uh, standard practices and procedures, the lawyers were like, we can't say They're kidnapped. They're so buttoned up about this. There's so many things. Yeah. And so I'm at, I'm nannying, I'm, I am I have three kids and uh, they're like, we can't say kidnapped. And I'm, they're like, what else? And I literally like type up a, an alternative. It's not even that funny. I don't, yeah. I, I actually don't, I love the set. I'm like so grateful, but I don't really love the ending. You had to change it for them basically. Quickly. Yeah. Typed it up, sent it in, kind of like a Hail Mary. Yeah. And they're like, great, done. Approved. Wow. And that was Monday. And I taped the fall, not like that Wednesday, but the next Wednesday. Whoa. Um, what a cool. So I felt like I fell through the cracks. But, and I remember that, that was also the thing I learned about late night is like, like I'm my, um, like how I am on stage. I'm kind of, you know, I, I, my brain isn't that fast. So a lot of times I'm like, Mm-hmm. <laughs> something like this I I kind of move around I look down I look up a lot mm-hmm. it's very casual and I remember Michael Cox was like look up he's like walk around but come back to center there's like yeah. this little yeah. uh, the gold clover the floor, yeah. yeah and I remember we did walk through and he was like he's like you're not coming back to center enough I'm like okay right so I have to look up and it's a little not he, he lets you be yourself but like it's a little like play the Play the play the game a play little. The, yeah, and so You're in their box in a way, right? Yeah. So I remember I watch the set now, and I look like I'm dancing because the whole time I'm like, "Come back to center." Oh. So I would like step and then step back yeah. on the clover, step, step back on the clover. It's so funny. And then and uh, and there's, anyways. So it's like a little bit of like remembering to play play the part, and then also like, and it's not. It's not that your set isn't your own. It is your it is your set, but within the parameters yeah, of S and P. So like you you could that. see somebody's set, and like I could be like, I wonder how much of that was the original mm. set. Now, when you're saying in. send, are you literally doing like a self tape of your set, like to for them custom, or you have like a clip from a show that you send initially? My, how does that work? So I I think I was I'm not like the usual. Yeah. I mean I was like he. My manager called me Thursday and he was like, he was like, can you get something this weekend? And I was featuring in Chattanooga. So I literally typed up like two different five minute sets and sent it to him. And he was like, I like this. We can't use that. We can't use that bit. Your manager said this. He edited Uh, it. No, Michael Cox. Is that the the booker at Tonight Show? Okay, cool. And so he was like, I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. Right. And so then I had, I'm reading this two minutes before I go on stage for the first time in Chattanooga. And he's like, fit this into five minutes. And I'm like, oh, this is seven, this yeah. is eight minutes. Yeah. And so I'm kind of like working it on stage. And um, so that was kind of like, so I sent him what I, the clip and he was like, all right, take this out. We can't do this, figure out something here. Mm. And then retaped it Sunday. And that was the one that they, he, cause he has to send it into standard, standard practices, that. procedures. You can get in so much trouble because like, comedy is so, you know, you could be so edgy as a comedian. I wonder what the repercussion is. Like if you just go off transcript, I, they wouldn't air it. It's not live. Yeah. They would I just think, cut you. I, I think I heard some stories. I don't say the comic, but like some comics who cussed or went super long. Yeah. And, and it's not live. I think we taped at the show started four, taping at three. three yeah. I probably went on. I was the last segment, so I probably went on about four nice, thirty. Nice. And so they they have time to edit. I mean, it's a dream though, too. It's like I love the story of like this is how show business is. Like you're busy living your life, you're mm-hmm. on tour, you're nannying, and then you're like, oh man, let me get this right. Let me try and work this, you know. Yeah. After JFL, which is like to your point, the the power of no. I, I struggle with that as a young comic. Like I want to do every show ever. I want to say yes. I actually just canceled on the show and I lost sleep over it. But I was like getting sick. I was like, I shouldn't go. I think I'm yeah. sick. But I there's a, so much in like the yes from the am I come up right now? I like you're reminding yeah. me. You're like, no, say no or, or have a no. Say no or have a no is gonna point you in the right direction. Yeah. I so I mean, I'm I'm two ways. I do say like like to getting the no, to not getting JFL. Yeah. I wouldn't have had the Tonight Show if I had JFL. That's crazy. Because I got the Tonight Show the same week of JFL. That's crazy. So had I because yeah. I didn't I wouldn't have uh, like signed with my management. They wouldn't mm. have pushed me or whatever. I will say this though. And I I'm probably a little bit sick. 
I'm a little bit obsessed with comedy nice. and doing everything. I will say like saying yes <laughs> when you can, I think within reason it benefits you. Totally. Even like, even if you go, this is just a, I mean, like two weeks ago I was kind of tired. Oh, I, I remember I, um, I got like, I was in Atlanta and I had a show in New York, like Two days later. Mm -hmm. But I got asked to do the uh, main room at the store and the nice. main room at improv. I flew back cross country for not even 11 hours to LA. Oh, you know what? This is when we met. You yeah, were telling yeah, yeah, me about yeah. how crazy you just were there for like a, a minute, right? Yeah. And yeah. and I I was like, I have the time. I have the ability. I'm trying to get diamond on Delta. I like uh, that. I and like I kind of came back. And you know what the craziest thing is? They weren't like, they weren't like career changing shows, but- just because I was there, I ended up meeting some people. Totally. That kind of is like, it was really good opportunity to meet people and hang out and do some other stuff. So I'm kind of like, I think I go, say yes within reason, yeah. even if it's not the most comfortable yes, because because yeah. you never know. I love. I think very similarly too, and I'm I'm just hitting that stride in the scene in LA. But even I met you in New York at the, yeah. for the comedy festival, so like. I, I like that feeling. Like you, we, you look. You said yes here. You're in the podcast yeah. now, so it is. Look at what a what a gift to from that. Yeah. Yes. I I love that about the comedy scene. Like it's just how it, it's how it mm -hmm. is, and it's never about like the individual show. It's about the long game. I think I feel that way now that I've been doing yeah. it for a bit. Like, who knows what'll come from now? I know, but I always think like it's the when you look back, it's not like. It's not the, I have to say yes, I have to give my all to this one opportunity. Sometimes it's the casual yeses that you go and do and you don't realize something that happens there was that little spark that led to something huge. I love it. Like, even sometimes I'm like, I don't want to, I, I don't have a lot of new material, but I have this bit I've been working on. Sometimes you go to like an open mic or a casual show and you maybe you have a drink you're a little loose you're the set is loose because mm -hmm. it's a casual show mm -hmm. so you're just doing you're just running this bit again mm -hmm. and all because you're loose you kind of riff more on it right or you say something all of a sudden there's there's like this huge punchline totally. that you that you tripped Stumbled into on basically yeah and and you suddenly you don't get there because if if it's a if it's a big show that you're like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to mess up. I don't river. You do the this. Haters. You're rigid yeah, about yeah. the bit. You don't riff. You don't mess around. Those aren't the ones you get. You find the like, the little extras. Mm. Those are like the casual shows that don't that don't pay or they pay in a drink ticket or something. Yeah. But sometimes you find the the punch the extra punchline in those. Also, like, I remember this. It, the this changed my life, and a lot of people were telling me I shouldn't even have done it when I. Kyle from KA, Kyle that runs Don't Tell Comedy. Mm -hmm. He, D I was in Atlanta. He DM'd me. He was like, "Hey, this is before Don't Tell. They were kind of growing, but they mm -hmm. weren't. As they were not what they are right now." Yeah. Um. He DM'd me, and he was like, "Hey, we're starting this kind of online, whatever content platform for for stand up, yeah. and uh, I'd love to get some comics that aren't from New York and LA. Did I tell you this in New York? No, I don't think so. Okay." And he goes, um, would you want to come out here and do a set? And I'd watched some of my friends, like Matthew Broussard had done sets. And nice. I just always thought they looked really good. Yeah. The and content's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that week I was like, I have I had a very good college friend wedding I was supposed to go to. And the ticket out there was like $900. And it was like silly stupid. Plus I'd had to get a rental car. It, it didn't like – I had to land in L.A. I drove – whatever hour hour and a half to Santa Barbara do the show come back and then fly back mm. like none of it made sense mm -hmm. um but I was just like I don't I think for some something in my head was just like everything about it does not make sense why because it wasn't it isn't what it is now right like don't it was just it it was essentially like somebody was like come out and do my podcast right. you know pay nine hundred dollars to fly out here do my podcast and um but I was just like I think I'm gonna do it so I canceled on the wedding I remember I flew out there. I did. I remember when I was at the show, another comic was like, uh, how long are you out here? And I was like, oh, just, I'm just doing the show and flying back. And they were like, just for this. Oh, and I was like, no, I'm, no, I'm doing it. I got the shows. Yeah, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, but then that set came out and those, those were the clips that went viral and set wow. everything off. So it's like, Great it is intuition. kind of, intuition. I know, but it's like, it's saying yes, sometimes, um, to something that on paper seems like that's you're an idiot for doing mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I, do. I, I think I'm attracted to the crazy of that, too, because I similarly think that way. And it's like, this doesn't make sense, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then there's some power in that, like you're going against the river flow a little bit, mm-hmm. which I think to be successful as a comedian or entertainer, you need to. You need yeah. to go against common sense. We're all a little crazy doing this, right? You have to. Yes. It's an obsession. Yeah. I, you're inspiring me to get more obsessed. I feel like I don't I don't obsess enough over my material and I wait. I do too many casual shows where I'm like, all right, yeah, here's my bit today. We'll see what this is like. But yeah. you have to obsess over it all. And I, I am getting yeah. there uh, about the craft of it. I like that you're all over the country too. Like I think when you see different audiences, you get to play around like like you're oh, yeah. describing a lot, you know? Oh yeah. Um, I know some people have done Don't Tell as well. I I that's a cool goal for me now. I know mm-hmm. you're bringing it up. Like that'd be a cool thing to do. Um it, I mean it's like it's the I think it's the perfect um answer to to how ha- what has changed in comedy. Uh, which is social media mm. and how careers can take off from just social media. There's no, the, the gatekeepers are gone Yeah. as far as like TV and film. And, and, you know, you do, do you're, you get on tonight's show where you have a comedy central half hour or whatever. And that was like your yeah. setting off point that you could never get any of those. You could never get JFL and you could be selling out theaters. Yeah. That's what's inspirational to me now, too. I always fought against social media because I've been doing the TV thing so long. So, mm-hmm. like, it was like, but now as a stand up, I see it that way. It's like, and I've done this with clips. I'm like, this is not funny, is it? I don't know. You know what? It's oh. 10 seconds. F it. Who cares? Mm-hmm. It's going to be gone tomorrow. But I've heard so many stories that are like, I thought this was dumb. And then it changed my life. And it is really cool to think for other creators out here listening, watching, it is like that. Yeah. The one thing could be like, Okay, now you're getting booked. And you're doing a, a run, or you know, people know you, or they watched everything else you did. That helped them with the don't tell clips for you. It yeah. sounds like, right? Yeah. I think more often to not, more often than not, the thing that you think is dumb explodes you. The the bit from Don't Tell that I that exploded me, I didn't even it wasn't even my set list to do. I fell into the bit. I was like, God, this is. I still think it's kind of hacky. Um, and well, the second half of the bit that I love is. The part that they didn't even include, they include the first part. It's your parents being cousins from the South, whatever. Nice. Um, oh, so it's, yeah, yeah. But I actually ac- accidentally stumbled into it. And then I was like, crap, I'm in this bit when I was on stage. And I was like, let me just do it really fast and move on. And that was the bit that they ended up putting out. It was like a Friday at three o'clock. I was like, oh, man, other comics are going to see this and be like, she's so hacky. Oh. I like, comics will come up to me this day like, are you that? <laughs> are you that comic? The parents of the cousins. Your your parents. It was puppy love. Same litter. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so it's always it's the more often than not, it's the bit you think they're stupid that helps you the most. And if a clip doesn't do well, it doesn't hurt you. Yeah, I actually don't believe in the term hacky anymore because it's about. Obviously, I want comics to think I'm a good comedian, but if it's getting laughs and you're entertaining a crowd, that's really the currency for me. Yeah. Because being in the bubble of comedy and and I don't know if you get anywhere overthinking what other comics think of you. It's hard not to, though. Oh, for but sure. I, that's a great bit. So it's not hacking. Thank you. But I think like it's easy to get in that thinking. We want to be cool and liked by our peers, yeah. but I also would rather just sell tickets. I don't know. There's, there's two things there. Oh, yeah. If you just do comedy for comics, well, you know, it's only one thing. It's right. Not, and you go, they're not buying tickets. Yeah, well, no, yeah, or 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 you want to be relatable. That's that's a funny Southern bit that's relatable to mm-hmm. a lot of people. That you know, that's what you want to write and do. I don't know. I don't like the word hacky myself because I probably am really hacky, and I just don't want to. I don't want to say it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I go. I think I've learned to. It, like you could, you could take a hacky premise. You could just, uh, free. Uh, salad bars are disgusting. <laughs> well, that's not even that hacky. It's pretty true. Uh, but like, if you kind of put your own spin on it, you put your own voice it to original, it. Yeah. I mean, you could do anything. I mean, men versus women, whatever. Like I, I had a, I was just, I like, I have a bit I'm doing now. It was just, I like recently have started to get DMs from women. I like people come up to me after show and they're like, it's my first time in my life I've really had women flirting with me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, God, women are so much better at flirting than men. <laughs> and at first I was like, that's so hacky. You're literally just saying men flirt this way, women flirt this yeah. way, men versus women. So I, and not to my own horn, but woo, woo. <laughs> uh, but like I just kind of, 
tried to figure out a way to spin it where the way I talked about it was unique yeah. and no one else was going to yeah. use it that way. That's the challenge of writing. And, and also with doing stand up, it's figuring out how you put your spin on stuff. You must have the confidence from doing it as long as you've done it to be like, oh, this is more me to kind of take it this way. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to get that footing on your because for I feel like the first few years you're like, I just want to try and be funny and be like people I like. And then I do think the voice thing starts to develop after a couple of years. Do you agree? For sure. Yeah. I think you just start figuring out what like you try this, you try this, you try this. And then you hear what people are uh, responding to. And then you keep then you you like dive into that more, you dive into that more. And then your voice comes out because the more you force yourself to write and work, it's just whatever. It's the most natural thing. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't do topical stuff. I don't do, I'm not great at, uh, word economy. Mm. Mm, I like so to bad. dance and flow around. Uh, it's so hard to trim. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh. so hard. It's Especially there. when you're up there. Right. You're, you're like, like hey, what's up? The, you have eight sentences that you could have said in three words, Catherine. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, all right, so that's not me. I'm not, I'm, I rather do storytelling. Yeah, I love and, that. And make it a jigsaw puzzle. But like you'll, you, then you'll, you'll watch a comic that's like so good at, such a good joke writer and so good at wordplay. And you're like, God, I want to, I want to do that. I want to be exactly, like that. It's my biggest insecurity. Yeah. Like I saw Norman that night. Yeah. I met you and I'm just like, he's just, I love the way he is with words. Yeah. I'm like, I can never. But it, but you realize like, you're like, but if, what if Maria Bamford was like, I'm not a good comic because I'm, I, I mean, she's fantastic, but she's not, you know, she's not, she, what if Maria Bamford was like, I suck because I'm not like Mitch Hedberg. Right. Then we all bring what we bring to it. And it, yeah. it, it's all, that's what's, I think freeing once you get to that place in your own head and mm -hmm. you're like, I'm not going to be like this other person. I'm me. Mm -hmm. And well, people will like it and it's funny. It doesn't matter how you get there. Yeah. It's just really hard. I think to have that confidence. It's almost like our own. I always say this too, like not to be self-righteous about doing comedy, but it's like introspection and therapy. Like you figure out what your stuff is, mm -hmm. what you want to share with the world, how you want to be funny about it. It's like, it's what we bring to it, you know? Right. And you get insecure if you compare, I think. I've always, yeah, because I and I like I struggle with this right now. Like I, so I started touring a couple years ago, and I really had to learn how to do an hour and use my voice and write. I just wrote a whole uh, new hour on the road, and I'm like, I got that now, right? Like I got my thing. I'm a storyteller though, so you know sometimes it's it's a build, right? Da 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 da. da. And, and then you know, then you go back into showcases. Mm. Right? You'll come and you do the store last night, right? Everybody's yeah. doing 10, 15, sometimes everybody's doing eight. And what you do, I'm like, I'm so good on the road. I'm so good with my hour, right? I'm so confident with that. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes when you're on a showcase, like you're you go after after somebody who's super high energy, doing crowd work, and it's hard to then you become insecure about your stuff that you're so confident on the road because someone's some, coming to see you mm -hmm. and it's your energy the whole time and maybe your energy doesn't match the person before you mm -hmm. and like I still have that insecurity where I'm like then I kind of like fake it you know I come up there and I'm more like and I'm not you know because you're just trying to break, like match that energy sure and I always love to watch a comic who is so confident in their stuff, like go after a super high energy comic and then they'll come up and they're low energy. Yeah. They'll and, do their thing. Right. And you're like, at first you're like kind of nervous for them. You're like, Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and it's not that it's there. They think it'd be an awesome comic. It's just, sometimes it's, it's totally. like a balance of energies. And I love watching those comics though, because at first for the first couple minutes, it is a little bit, it's it's hard. Like there's Are an adjustment. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the crowd goes, Oh, this is you? Yeah. Oh, when we're riding with it. Yeah. And it's always like that three or four minute mark that people then settle down and 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 then accept their thing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the 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 ride of laughs gets there. And I love watching that. Cause I'm like, that's what you need to do. Be yeah. confident in in your own stuff and don't try and like 
fit somebody else. Totally. On a I do think there's some adapting that happens when you do shows in general with the room when there are yeah. club shows like that. But to your point, it is confidence and it's knowing your voice enough and knowing that it works in yeah. any environment. That's like the freedom that I want to get to as well. That I think you're at though from touring, but but mm -hmm. you're probably just overthinking the 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 showcases a little bit. Also, the world famous comedy store. I don't know if you're how long you've been performing there. Oh, randomly. Oh, I'm I, th not I didn't even... know how often you were there because oh, like because I'm in my head when I'm there. Every time I'm there, I'm yeah. like, this is the spot. I it, I like I better be. Oh my god! Like mm -hmm. I just saw so and so, and I better. Yeah. I'm not there a lot. I've been there a few times. Did I? So I'm like, oh maybe. So I think also, you know, we get in our heads to, uh, on certain environments, right. but you're funny enough to just do your thing. You, the crowd will come with you. Yeah. I, I like to think so. Yeah. Um, I'm here. I'm the guy to tell you. I'm telling okay, you now. Okay, That's it. It's settled. You. Thank you. Yeah, well, no problem. Yeah, you know, I, I never <laughs> want to be too confident. <laughs> we, I know. Isn't that a weird balance? If you're like up there, like the Kanye West of stand up, you're going to bomb. But if you're, <laughs> if you're like... A shell of confidence. It's also, I mean, Mitch Hedberg is a good example. The guy hated being up there, wrote the best jokes ever. Yeah. He, that's why he wore sunglasses, right? He couldn't even look at the crowd. Yes. But he had no confidence, but he had the best jokes. It's weird. It's weird how hey, this you, thing is. Don't you dare start loving yourself or your jokes are going to suck. I know. You freaking. I have a fear. I'm so success. I'm such a peacocking Italian. I have the fear that I'm just like not funny and overly confident. I was up there like, hey, I'm here. It's me. What's up, yeah. guys? He, and there's like, where is there a joke here? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything? He's just hey, up there being yeah, Frankie Valley. What are you, you? You don't get this, you idiots. Yeah, my friends laughed at this yeah. the other night. Hey. I do that all the time, though. I'm like, I you don't know. understand. Tulsa loves this. That's a great. Tulsa like, loves this, Venice. You, I, get, Venice, grow up. Yeah. I, that's a good tag. I do think that that's because I'm a people pleaser and I, I, I'm an optimist and I. Yeah. I'm less people pleasing into stand up and in my adult life now. I think I'm more mm -hmm. of a jerk, but I do sometimes go against. The, I get if I'm very confident having fun, I will go against. And there's so much fun there. Like the, yeah. well, the other night, I said a similar thing. I was like, "This kills in Alabama to Burbank," and I was yeah. like, "You guys are so woke. This kills in Alabama," and it it worked because I was like, "F you guys. I don't need. I don't need your approval." It's a weird right. kind of balance. Yeah, because we do. We well, do need it. But also, I was just in Burbank. It, it, no, never mind. Where was I? Flappers. I, I was at Flappers. Right, right, right. I like that place. I, I do too. I, I just like, uh, I, I love when you tell an audience that like, they're, they come there to have a good time and enjoy. And you're like, you're not doing your part, you <laughs> yeah. idiots. And they're like, I'm tired. I just worked today. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. And you're like, you, you get up and dance like me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's just, it's just like, uh, Having the confidence to know that, like, you're this is this is it. This works, and sometimes whatever environment is, it's not the perfect match. Oh, there's so many things. I actually learned a lot the night I met you because um, I never hung out oh, yeah. with Mark Norman before, and I was there. For, I, I love all the comics on that show. I know Nikki. That's why I was there. Nikki Paris, who's the best, but um. He was talking about the crowd before he went up mm -hmm. and it was refreshing. I like it any level because he's somebody obviously doing big things. He was describing yeah. the crowd and he was like talking about the room. It's like we all go through that no matter yeah. what. I, I think you're the biggest headliner in the world. You're still going to be like, oh, I don't know about this crowd tonight. Or, this crowd's great. Or it is a unique like every night's different thing. Yeah. I think that's why I, I fell in love with it now. Yeah. I mean every – dude, I'm like – like – Every region is different. Uh, like, dude, I go out to LA and I feel like more, I hate, uh, I mean, this isn't in a bad way because every, it's fun everywhere, but like more surface level jokes work here, mm -hmm. kind of more energy, more, um, you know, uh, younger jokes mm -hmm, work mm -hmm. here yeah and and then like you go to huntsville alabama and all of a sudden like maybe more of a, like a joke here that doesn't work as much about uh, i'm talking about like country kids are used to uh you know watching animals die and get slaughtered and city kids aren't mm -hmm. like it doesn't do well in venice yeah yeah and all of a sudden you got alabama and like you know, you're talking about women flirting and they're like, what? And that, that does so well. And, and right. Venice, 
But also when you're talking about like, you know, country kids learning how I, that cows are slaughtered and they're like, and it's, and it's like connect, like they're, they're, they love it. They're yeah. like, yeah, this Relatable. is our life. We get Relatable. it. And so I don't, it's like, um, and then, and then you just, fit, I don't know. It's like knowing that like, sometimes a joke, it's, it's a great joke. It's just, it's the region you're in yeah. and, and like having the confidence to do it wherever you are. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And people will come up to you after a show time sometimes and when you like that bit didn't really hit hard and somebody afterwards will be like, They'll go, I love how they, it's like a backhand compliment. They're like, listen, I loved that bit. I get that. And you're like, yeah. the I, the emphasis on the I hurts a little bit, yeah, but I yeah. do appreciate what you're saying. They're like, I'm a level above this crowd intellectually. Yeah. And I understand that, that that would work and works for you. Yes. Other cities, maybe more. Yeah. Um, what have you learned the most from touring? Because I'm really, I really want to tour eventually. And what's that like? What, what have you learned as a comedian and a person? Are we all dumb Americans? Yeah. <laughs> uh yes and it's such a beautiful thing mm. thank god it's actually the best thing mm. um i hate intellectuals uh <laughs> so, uh, so much so much that i've learned from touring i mean truly like learning how to be okay learning how to do an hour is a dance this yeah. is like my latest thing it's not it's sometimes it's not there's, there is, it's like, um, it's like a movie plot. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you have to like, your intro is like, you hit them hard. You let them know who you are. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it's a, it's a flow. It's an up mm. and down, like the way you do your set and the way like, you know, you've got, you, you hit them at a hard at a 20 minute mark and then, and then you give them a break and then maybe you do a more crowd worky bit to, to offset a long story. Mm. And like, it's always a dance. And then afterwards it's like, you realize though that people just want to connect with you and your merch, people aren't buying your merch because they want your merch. They want to mm. support you. Right. And it's, you don't have to have a nice t-shirt and 800 things. Yeah. Sometimes you can have a sticker and people will pay you $20 yeah. just because they want to support you. Right. And, and learning like, um, that this business is about people and not yourself. And that, mm. that like longtime fans are people that they had a bit that they connected with. And then after the show, you, you got to chat with them mm. for, for a couple minutes. And now like, they're going to go tell your, their friends that live in Minnesota when you're in Minnesota right. to come see you. And it's all just about not being a robot and being a person. Yeah. The better you are at being a person and connecting with people is better than being some arrogant robot that's like, totally. here's my art, accept it, and now I will vanish. Right. Like that's never going to get you far on I the road. I totally relate to that. And that's why I want to tour. I think connecting, yeah. I love connecting with people and I can see how that works when you're genuine because people want us to be authentic on stage mm -hmm. and when you're authentic in person and they meet you and I, I'm just so appreciative. Like I, the, the week we met, I did my first show ever like for the festival yeah. and I couldn't believe people could, like it's still that feeling in me. It's like you guys came, like people show up for you on crazy. tour. It is crazy. I hope you never lose that the bigger you get because yeah. if you think about it, it is crazy. You know, it, like people spend money, drive to you, go have a good time with you. It doesn't make sense. It's awesome. It blows my mind. It's I'm great. Like, what are you guys doing? I literally <laughs> say every single time, I'm like, there's no way you guys got bought tickets here. You're just here because you need shelter. You're <laughs> running from the law, all of you. There's yeah. no reason that you guys should be here right now. Yeah. It always, it, it blows my mind. Well, you've been working hard at it though. You're a good example of someone who's been doing it for a bit and understands what you want to say at this point and yeah. is genuine. I think that's a, the perfect combo for, for why it's working. Yeah, I think, hopefully, I think I'm just truly, I like you said, I just, I'm always, I, I think, like, you know how they, you, maybe there's a million different universes, right? And our, you know, every time our life goes, we make a decision, there's a splits and there's different parallel universes or whatever. I genuinely think the one I'm in right now is the best case scenario. And I'm like, I, I think I'm either in a dream or I'm living, I somehow got lucky in this universe and I am, I'm, there's, I don't know. I, I've, I'm so grateful and like, I think I've always, I love, I'm just, I found something I'm obsessed with and it's fun for me every single day. And I, and I'm just cra like constantly doing other scarier stuff that are terrifying mm. and like failing at it a lot, but like just working at it. And then in the little things that you do every single day, like all of a sudden build up and build up and build up. Yeah. And, um, it, 
and then all of a sudden you're surprised that like this amazing thing is happening mm. and it's I don't know I think I just have a not in like a sense of gratitude like I have to have gratitude I'm just amazed it's that genuine, it's happening yeah. <laughs> I love that I also think you're you're helping me today I feel like you're my therapist today because it is it is that long game like everything we do matters but it yeah. doesn't feel that way especially in this field mm -hmm. but in general for everybody like you, these little you know you can be huffing it and things can be difficult and you don't realize each day you put your best foot forward and you try and you work at something it does pay off it's just not there's not as much instant gratification as i think we all want yeah. so what you're reminding me is like the steps you're doing are working keep doing it yeah I need that reminder more. Like it's almost like the laughs are that reminder when we're doing shows, but then we have all this other time we don't get them. We're like, yeah. am I doing like, you know, I think I look at it like sometimes I just think of it as a numbers game. Like I go sometimes like, like a bit that, that all of a sudden has worked so well and is amazing. If it, it bombed 22 times before something finally clicked. So I just go, okay. Sometimes I look at a bit that's not going well and I go, this has to bomb 25 times before it gets there. So I do it. I mean, it's not like I'm just doing the same bit and it's bombing. You're but you know, to I'm fix working, it. Yeah. right? Chiseling. So some of the things I look at it is like, okay, that bit didn't bomb and I'm a failure. I go, yes, that's one more bomb closer to it working. Mm. And I go, oh, it's I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer, yeah. I'm getting closer. So I don't like try and beat myself up over failure. I look at it as one more step to getting for it to going really well. Yeah. That, so I like, yeah. So it's like that. And then like, like I, I force myself to write a lot and sometimes I hate writing and I, mm, and it's, too. it's mundane, but I go, well, if you do, maybe nothing comes over this, but maybe it's one punchline and it's getting closer. So I think, I don't know. I, I just look at it as like, a, a instead of a it being awful, it's exciting to make, get one step closer. Yeah. When you fall in love with the stuff you initially didn't, didn't love doing. I think that's a ticket for for things going better because you're for everything working it out. It's like all it's all that way. It's yeah. like you do stuff that feels terrible. It put it can push you in the right direction. I need that reminder for writing too because I write all these premises and I just don't finish them ever. And I just have a thousand of them. But it's a discipline. Any mm -hmm. anybody who's successful, it's a discipline that you figure out. Yeah. I like the idea too of like things coming out. Like you're reminding me too to kind of play around. And find stuff when you're up there. Because it happened to me recently too. And it's like, why not? This is what we're doing. Right. We have the best job in the world. And we get to play around. And and, and what we play around with could change our lives. You know? Oh, I, yeah. lo I love that, like, access to that. It's crazy. Yeah. I and love like, it. And, like, and saying something that hundreds of other people have wanted to say or hear somebody else say. And they're like, yeah. yes, get that. Yeah, say, yeah, the relatability. I yeah. know, I know. That's that's I think what works the most for you and for a lot of comedians is like you get you we get to say the stuff. That's why mm -hmm. like comedy is always gonna be around. We get to say what people it's kind of blurred into my personal life in a bad way though. Like I'm very truthful, bluntly with everybody because it's stand up. Yeah. I'm like, F it. Yeah, is, eh. And they're like, you're really harsh now. I'm like, no, I'm just doing a bit. Life is short. Yeah. Like if it's funny, is it funny or not? Whatever. You don't want to be the person that's just placating everybody yeah. to be pleasant. I know. It's boring. It's so boring. You're not um, a southern woman. You're not a southern woman living on a cul-de-sac. Yet. No, I like your poofy sleeves on your dress. It's pretty. <laughs> you look great. Yeah. You know, you don't sound southern for being southern, by the way. I know. I say it all the time. Uh I I don't I grew up in Louisville. Which was like very much the city part, it. but my both my parents were from tobacco farms in mm. Marion County, Kentucky, and Owensboro, and and all my family are on farms and very country. And I I think I just didn't I don't know I didn't I didn't want to have the if I talk to my family and I get off the phone, it comes out. It comes out, but I uh, I don't know. I forced. I don't. I didn't. It didn't stick in me. What happens to you when I say Louisville? I don't care as much now because I grew out of Louisville and realized it's not the center of the universe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just, I honestly, you know what I think? Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Because if you know how to say Louisville, you spent too much time there. <laughs> Louisville, Louisville. I love, I love that. That's like how you say it. It's amazing. It's like you, you know, you're from there because of how you say it. It's, it's on. I don't. When people get like so mad at people that say Louisville, I'm like, what? So they're not. They're they don't have there. a lazy mouth. Who cares? Yeah. 
Uh, before you go, you're about to do your new special, right? Yeah. I saw. What, what's in going Louisville. on with that? In Louisville. In Louisville. Are you excited? You're about to film a special. So excited. I feel like you're ready. You've been working the hour. Yeah. yeah. I'm so ready. Um, I, yeah, I'm just super, I'm so proud of myself. Uh, what? Is that crazy to say? No, it's awesome. I think I have so much to learn, but I'm excited to, like, for this, to finally bookmark this chapter mm. of my life. Like, the first kind of time I stepped out and, and wrote an hour on the road. And um, I like how it's developed. I like the voice I'm learning to step into. Mm. And I think this is a good representation of it. And I'm doing it in Louisville. Um, and I'm putting a horse on stage, a silver fake horse on stage, life-size horse. I heard. This sounds amazing. I know. I'm just so, hopefully, there's so many things that are up in the air right now <laughs> about everything as far as lighting and the design and everything sure. else. But I think it'll all come together and I just, I'm, I'm so proud of myself. You should be. I'm so pumped to see it once you're done. Uh, I'm honored you're here now because you're just, you're blowing up. And I feel like I appreciate you taking the time to come to my little dinky garage to hang out. It means Thank a lot. You. Now we're friends. We're, we're well, friends now. We don't have to be friends because you did me a favor by coming. We could just be friends. No, I will pay you after this. Yes. I'll Venmo yes. you. Yes. Yeah, for the coffee. Thanks. No, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, and one muffin. One muffin. Yeah. No, I appreciate you coming out. And uh, I like doing this where I, I, I meet comics I like and I, I'm like, I think are doing big things and are funny. And I, just, I, pre I almost feel like I'm a student in class listening to you talk about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea for comedy. So I appreciate your it's wisdom. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Don't listen to me. That's also... Perfect. All of it. Yeah. That's it. That, maybe I'll title this episode that. It's, it's all, all bullshit. <laughs> it's all horse shit. Call there you go. That. That's right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's right. Thank you for coming. Guys, Thank check you. out Catherine on the road. Follow her on all her social media. Where can everyone follow you? So make sure. At it's Catherine Blanford. Yes. And go see her. You're all over the country all the mm -hmm. time, right? Yes. Make sure everywhere. you're live. Come, come see me in Bloomington, Minneapolis. That's the spot. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to kill. Awesome. Everywhere. Thanks so much for doing Thank this. You. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Toodles. Toodles.